In the thematic category way, there is a discursive formation that is more descriptive than associative. In most cases, the statements that emphasize the body mass of the corpulent characters portrayed this body characteristic as negative, with the exception of some situations of corporal struggle, in which they were positive. In the other cases, in addition to being portrayed negatively, they were also accompanied by an appeal to humor, which reinforces the perception of a stigmatizing discourse. 23 excerpts were found that contained statements about the body mass of the characters. Amatizations were mostly indirect, with a slight upward trend in the period under investigation. In this first excerpt, from George's Mealy's Fat and Lean Wrestling Match, from 1900, a burly fighter faces a skinny man. After shaking hands, the fight begins and, in the first charge, the skinny tries unsuccessfully to lift the corpulent, not being successful due to the excessive body weight. He is proud, expressing his opponent's debauchery. After a second attempt, the big guy still falls on top of the skinny man, crushing him with his weight. In La Consul du Pipe de Tour à Tour à La Foyer, from 1908, by Mulies, the same basic statements are explored again, this time, a man fights against a woman. The large body mass provides competitive advantages in body fights, the opponent is unable to lift him off the ground and, if he falls on top of him, he will crush him. In Mulies's La Chape surprises, in 1901, the filmmaker himself acts as an illusionist pulling people out of a giant top hat. First, take a girl out, helping her down. Before removing the second character, however, he looks inside the hat and gestures body and with his cheeks, shaking his head negatively. It is understood, then, with the action of turning the hat, instead of helping the character to leave, that it would be impossible to do as with the girl because of the weight of the man who is removed. The contrast between both characters works to enlarge the small comic joke. Charlie Chaplin, in 1915's By the Sea, will emphasize the burly villain's excessive weight when he sits on a wooden bench, on which the young woman is sitting, making her take a little jump for the impulse created. He repeats the same gag yet again, reinforcing the desired comic effect. And then, still in the same film, one last time the same idea now with the young lady and the tramp, making them both jump on the bench. In Behind the Screen, in 1916, Chaplin explores a slightly different comic situation around body weight. The burly villain is supported by three men, who try in vain to pull him out of a trapdoor.
and the 1917 film The Butcher Boy, by Roscoe Arbuckle, the joke about the overweight of the chubby butcher will be related to him leaning on the scale where the meat weighs. The title makes a small pun with the certain expression used by customers. In another Roscoe Arbuckle film, The Cook, from 1918, the body characteristic will be the target of a joke when taking a small carriage behind, due to the weight of the chubby, leaving the goat that pulled it comically. Max Linder, in Max Wants a Divorce, from 1917, will already be more explicit in the underline of the pretender's excessive body weight, saying she is very heavy, preferring, later, a thinner girl. Here, it is stated that excessive weight makes women aesthetically undesirable. Buster Keaton, on the other hand, will exploit a certain inertia conferred by the great body mass making thin characters collide and fall against burly characters. He will use this idea in the 1921 films The Goat and then, in Pale Face, from 1922. An identical idea will also be explored by the duo Hardy and Laurel, in the movie The Lucky Dog, from 1921. 